and welcome to Good Game Spawn Point. I'm Rad. Coming up on today's show, we take the toy car arcade racer Hot Wheels Unleashed for a spin. And Darren unmasks the mythic origins of Crash Bandicoot's Aku Aku and Uka Uka. Plus, we've got some juicy gaming news and some even juicy questions to answer in Ask SP. So, let's get juicy! Uh, the episode. Start the episode. Well, it's been another game-filled week, and it seems I've been drawn into the curious crafting and combat of Craftopia. It's a lot of things. It's an open-world multiplayer survival game, it's an RPG, there's farming, building, animal eating, and it's a hot mess. And I mean that in the nicest way. You start out with nothing but your wits, fists I can only assume are made of steel, and pockets deep enough to stash food and materials you'll use to build weapons, machinery, and structures to advance the age you're currently in. What makes Craftopia really enjoyable, for me at least, is how all over the place it is. One minute you're punching sheep into submission, Next minute, you're travelling through magic portals to battle rock monsters, and then you're running for your life from whatever creature has decided you're their sworn nemesis today. It's a lot, and still in early access, so I'm sure there'll be more to come. Although I'd be lying if I said I wasn't enjoying the chaos. Speaking of chaos, we have a ton of gaming news to get through, starting with Minecraft Live, which has once again brought us news of what to expect next from the blocky behemoth. The annual Minecraft Livestream Extravaganza unearthed plans for the next major themed update, which will be known as the Wild Update. It's set to include things like mangrove swamps, frogs, mud blocks, and boats with chests. Other highlights included news that Minecraft Java and Bedrock on PC will soon be bundled together in the same launcher and available through Game Pass for PC. There will be new mob customization tools, Minecraft Dungeons will be getting seasonal adventures, plus we had the result of the community mob vote. The LA took out this year's title, a cute little dancing creature that seeks out the same or similar items you present to it. Oh, to have those in real life. Sticking with the topic of updates, we heard some more info about what's on the horizon for Animal Crossing New Horizons. The massive November update will bring some fan favourite characters into the game. Brewster will open his cafe, The Roost, within the museum. Cap'n returns for more shanty shenanigans. Plus, Hippie Harv's Island is expanding with plans for a shopping precinct, with a little help from hairdresser Harriet. We'll also see the return of gyroid collecting, a new exercise minigame, cooking and new food, plus new items, customization options and decorations, more home storage, and a bunch more. It's probably the biggest free update for the game yet. There will also be a new paid DLC, Happy Home Paradise, where you can build holiday homes for in-game clients. And there's another treat for frog fans in this update, with the addition of the famous froggy chair confirmed. Frog fans rejoice, ribbit. <laughs> Moving on now, and this year's winners of the Australian STEM Video Game Challenge have been revealed. Nearly 2,800 students from schools across Australia entered the 2021 comp and were tasked with designing and building an original video game around this year's theme, Scale. Winning games in each of the categories were showcased through PAX Australia Online and are available to download and play via the PAX Oz website exhibitor page. And let me tell you, some of these games are top notch. Better than my game making efforts, I must admit. All right, now I've been wondering if the wheels in Hot Wheels Unleashed are spicy hot or temperature hot. So let's fire up the review and find out. Hot Wheels Unleashed is the latest take on the tiny die cast car phenomenon. It's a fast, light hearted arcade racer that's all about clean racing on ridiculous tracks the lines of track mania rather than Mario Kart and you'll have a good idea of it. The racing is quite simple but super solid. There are no weapons or power-ups but there are special sections of track like boost pads and speedy bits as well as obstacles like barriers or slowing down bits. There's a boost you build up gradually as you race and quickly when you drift which is really the only power in your kit. 
Like any good arcade racer, you'll almost never let go of the accelerator. And braking isn't really for slowing down, it's for engaging epic drifts. And I gotta say, this has one of the best GGDs out there. Oh, that's great gaming drifts. To be honest though, I would have liked a little more action to it all. A silly racer like this felt like it was crying out for some kind of weapons or the ability to ram and take out other racers. The cars especially don't feel like they have any real weight when they hit. Although I suppose Hot Wheel cars don't weigh much, so I guess in that way it's realistic. Mm. Ah, but speaking of realistic, I love how the tracks take place in real rooms and really give you that sense of being a tiny toy racing through them. You're also often free to just fly off the track and explore if you want, and potentially find epic shortcuts. You'll spend most of your time with this working through the Hot Wheels City Rumble, which is a pretty sizable campaign. This splits heaps of events up across a map, opening up new paths to take as you complete races. There's really only two main types of event though, quick races and time attacks. But there are some fun twists to it, like cryptic secrets to unlock and five special boss races. These are extra long tough races with some added element of danger. For example, one boss race adds in an acid spitting scorpion that will drain all of your available boost. There are also various reward nodes you can reach on the map which dish out new cars and blind boxes. These give you a random car when opened. Now, my loot box alarm went off when I saw this, but thankfully you can't pay real money for them. You just have to play to earn them, which is a big tick. Outside the campaign, there's online multiplayer and local split screen, which I love to see. Although I did feel the lack of power-ups, especially in the multiplayer, because if you mess up and end up at the back of the pack, you're probably staying there. All up, it's a great little racer. It's fast, colorful, and satisfying. It takes all of the toy boxes you want from a Hot Wheels game. So I'm giving Hot Wheels Unleashed four out of five rubber chickens. Most amusing. Does it then? Oh, welcome back, Spawnlings, to another epic tale from video games past. Today, the feud between the iconic mask spirits Aku Aku and Uka Uka of the Crash Bandicoot games. Long ago, Aku Aku was a powerful human witch doctor who protected the planet from his own villainous brother, Uka Uka. During this lengthy, brotherly struggle, they abandoned their human forms and transformed into ancient tribal masks that granted them immortality. Aku Aku was able to imprison Uka Uka for a while, but this was just the beginning. Crash Bandicoot might be the face of the famous platforming series, but without the help of Aku Aku, he would still be stranded on a beach back in 1996. <laughs> In the first two Crash Bandicoot games, Aku Aku was a silent character, and he didn't say much other than his delightful catchphrase that we continue to love today. What have we got? The noble Aku Aku assists Crash, Coco, and friends in order to defeat the evil forces of Dr. Neo Cortex and his malevolent gang of bad guys. It was not until Crash Bandicoot walked that Aku Aku had a more active role in the story. After Uka Uka is released from his underground prison, Aku Aku gathers Crash and Coco into a time machine and they begin a mission to halt Cortex and Uka Uka's plan. Aku Aku and Uka Uka square off in the final battle, but the time machine malfunctions and the dastardly duo are seemingly sent away to another realm. The bitter rivalry is further continued in Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex. Uka Uka recruits the help of the Elementals, a group of maleficent masks who share their desire for world domination and causing global chaos. <gasps> Aku Aku leads the team to put the masks back into hibernation and stop Cortex's secret super weapon, Crunch Bandicoot. Ultimately, Uka Uka and Cortex fail again when Crunch joins Crash and Aku Aku instead, leaving the baddies stranded in an icy wasteland. Brrr. 
Then, in a strange turn of events, Crash and Aku Aku are forced to team up with their nemesis Cortex in Crash Twin Sanity. In this game, Ensanity Island comes under threat from a new enemy called the Evil Twins who love, yes, you guessed it, world domination. Uka Uka isn't too happy about the Evil Twins' plans to destroy the planet because there can only be one big baddie in town. No! That's my job! The Mask Brothers confront the Evil Twins, but are also eventually defeated and are left to support Crash and Cortex throughout the game instead. Fools! Aku Aku and Uka Uka also return for a number of wacky Crash Bandicoot spin-offs and even sporting a completely new look at one point. Deal with Crash and my pathetic brother. And finally, in Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, Aku Aku makes way for the Quantum Masks, siblings who assist Crash and Coco with time-bending powers to stop Cortex and Entropy. In a twist, Cortex hears Uka Uka's evil laughter in the distance before seeing the mask approach him with a wicked smile. But we'll have to leave the story there for now, Spawnlings. Although this isn't the end of Aku Aku and Uka Uka. They are immortal after all. <laughs>
The biggest living leviathan you can find in the original Subnautica, I believe, is the Sea Emperor. You encounter the Sea Emperor towards the end of the story, located in a special containment facility deep within the Lava Lakes region. It's said to be up to 200 metres in length. Huge! There are some fossils around the underwater world that suggest there may have been some other larger creatures that once existed, though. As for below zero, though, well, I think the largest living leviathan here is the Vent Garden Leviathan. Though these are much less dangerous than the many other Leviathan-class creatures in the game, they measure about 110 metres, and they're found in what's known as the Tree Spires region of the map. Of course, there's also a certain frozen Leviathan, found near the Fee excavation site, if you count that, which I do. It's about 150 metres in length. As for where to find axolotls in Minecraft, well, as of the 1.17 update, they can be a little tricky to find. I believe they only spawn naturally under certain conditions. That is, in water, in total darkness, below sea level, or Y level 63, and with particular blocks above and around them. So at the moment, you're most likely to find them in areas like waterways in caves. But once the 1.18 update brings the lush caves biome into the picture, axolotls will apparently be found there. And of course, if you're playing Minecraft in creative mode or using cheats, you can spawn or summon them whenever you like, pretty much. And believe me, I do. But now I think we have time for one more quick question, and this one comes to us from Marcus. Hi, GGSP. I have one question for you. When do you think Brawl Stars will be released on the Switch? Thanks, Marcus. It would be great if Brawl Stars came to the Switch, but I haven't heard of this being an official possibility anytime soon. And the developer of Brawl Stars, Supercell, has been known for mobile-specific games for a while, so I'm not sure whether pushing into the console arena is in their game plan. That's not to say it can't or won't ever happen, but we'll just have to wait and see. And that's all the time we have for Ask SP today. If you have a question for us, go here to send it in. And if it's a video that we choose to answer on the show, we'll send you some sweet GGSP stuff. All right, now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get back to summoning as many axolotls as physically possible. Ooh, ooh, that's a lot of axolotls. They're so cute. Well, that may be all the time we have for this week's episode, but get set to space out next week. As we set the controls for some interstellar exploration in Jet the Far Shore. Cover some mysterious outer space secrets in the Outer Wilds DLC, Echoes of the Eye. Ooh, I cannot wait to hear that Outer Wilds soundtrack again. Until then, stay safe, be nice, have fun, and keep gaming. Right out. Gem out.